Time traveling back to my old apartment and a year and a half younger. I am practically a fetus here. Step one to this tutorial is to be super pale. I obviously have that covered. Also black contacts for that extra soulless look. Now before you can become sick Snow White, you must first become a healthy and happy Snow White. You know what that means, right? Bad eyebrows. I naturally have transparent brows, so all I need to do for the first step is to wipe these babies off and draw them back on. But for you, you may want to do what's called blocking your brows. I'll leave instructions on that in the description box. Disney princesses go through a lot of stress to find true love, which may have led them down this path of overplucking, so we need to be sympathetic to that. There's an art to drawing these, and it's basically to think of a happy face, but with a frown. So not a happy face at all, a frown face. Draw the mouth of the frown face with your eyebrow product of choice where each brow belongs. When you wish for thick eyebrows Next, take a neutral brown color that's darker than your skin and blend it into the crease of your eyelid using a fluffy brush. Nothing fun happening here, really, really basic. Following that, I'm taking a warm kind of peachy nude color and sweeping that lightly over the lid to look less like a corpse. Taking your favorite black liner, do the most basic, tiny, straight, no wing, no fun eyeliner you can muster. Can you tell him not to into Snow White's makeup style? Hmm. Add mascara. If you're not making funny faces while doing so, then you're not concentrating hard enough. Snow White's too boring, so we're giving her lashes. I don't care what the fairy tale says. Disney, here's a suggestion. Lashes. Man, I feel like a woman. Moving on to making our eyes big and bright and cartoony AF. Use a white eye pencil in the lower waterline. This is like my favorite makeup related party trick. So white, much wow. Apply your favorite pink blush for that healthy, not hanging over the toilet yet glow. Lastly, line your lips with a red lip liner and fill it in with a red lipstick of your choice. Glam Snow White complete. On to the gore. The concept of a sick Snow White is taken straight from the events of the movie in which Snow White eats a poisoned apple. This version just with a little extra realness and graphicness. Not all the princesses in this series will be literal takes from their fairy tales, but this one happens to be since the gory aspect is built right in. Let's begin. We're gonna start by making our face look sunken in. Taking a dark contour color, whether it's cream or powder, start defining the hollows of your cheeks. Making a fishy face can help you find exactly where that is if you're unsure. Use that darker color to fill in and lightly blend out the entire area below the cheekbones and then do the same in other spots of the face like the temples and eye sockets. I chose to make the hollows of my cheeks extra defined, but it's up to you how theatrical you'd like to make it. To keep this look consistent throughout, I did similar shading down my neck and chest. Using a tiny bit of red cream paint, I'm applying that messily under my eye to give the look of irritation. Then I'm choosing a pukey kind of greenish tan water activated paint on a wet piece of sponge and dabbing that all over my skin to give it extra texture and start building the illusion of translucence. I blend a little afterwards with a regular makeup wedge to ensure that the marks aren't too harsh. Repeat this process with a light gray and a deep red, again remembering to bring it all the way down your neck and chest. I decided to go back to the sunken contouring phase and add some to the nose and a little around the edge of the mouth, but on to the real fun. We're making vom, guys. You're gonna need a container, some kind of a mixer like a popsicle stick, and some variety for our puke. Might I suggest some cereal? How about some crackers? Have some water handy, and finally we will need latex. 
Some of you may remember a similar method of making bomb from my exorcist tutorial. But it's funny because this puke fest was shot well before that one. Start by crushing some of your ingredients in your container, adding water to mush it up more if necessary. Try not to eat all your supplies. And let me also quickly say that there's a fine line with using food in place of products made for special effects. Dry foods with preservatives are okay if that's the only thing accessible to you, but do not ever use any food like raw meat in a makeup look because it is a bacteria fest that will rot on your body as it's worn and poses a very serious potential threat to whoever is wearing the makeup. One seemingly invisible cut in the skin and you've got the perfect recipe for infection, so save your meatballs for the dinner table. PSA over. Oh yeah, looking vomit. Don't forget your breakfast. Honey bunches of oats and frosted flakes work best for this, I think, but you can experiment with different shapes. Top off your cereal by pouring milk, I, I mean latex, all up in there. Stir until all your chunks are covered thoroughly. I will call this section strategic puke placing. Start slathering it on. You get to decide how messy of a hurler you are. Let your creativity flow right out of you like a waterfall of stomach acid. Once you've painted your canvas, revel in your sexiness and let the bomb dry. While that's drying, let's start this series off right by whipping out the scab blood. Have it get acquainted very nicely with your nostrils. I'm no doctor, but I'd be willing to bet that someone, somewhere, has puked so hard that they had a nosebleed. And today, princess, that's you. I doubt anyone's ever puked so hard that they start bleeding from their eyeballs, but, you know, it's scab blood. I can't help myself. Coughing up your innards is a workout, so next I'm using a product called Ultra Sweat to add little beady droplets of liquid stress around my face. If you don't already have this stuff, you can use good old-fashioned lubricant. Hey, I didn't make the rolls. Our vom should be done drying by now, which is when you can start painting it. I'm going for a beautiful shade of tan with a pinch of army green and a highlight of baby poo brown. I'm using a brush to apply the water activated paints and a sponge to diffuse them. Gloss it over with a little bit of cream color to give that frothy feel. Lastly, coat it with some glycerin to give it that fresh out the throat and full of saliva finish. Grab some brown tooth enamel because no one chucks up their dinner without needing a toothbrush in afterwards. This stuff works by getting your teeth really dry first and then painting it on. I rubbed some off right after applying it so that it wasn't totally even, and voila, you now look like Wendy from Breaking Bad. No gore tutorial is fully complete without these terrifying eye drops that I hate, but that look oh so cool. First yellow because yellow equals sick in my mind. Clean up your yellow tears. Lastly, I added black eye drops too because I wanted more drama. You can try to keep under your eyes clean, but truly these things just don't last long, so it'll probably fluff up your makeup in the process of reapplying. This concludes the special effects part of the tutorial. Hopefully your college experience didn't look anything like this. Call Poison Control, drink some ginger ale, and pop a Tums to settle that stomach. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you feel like a princess. When Bay eats too many hot Cheetos. Like them apples. Shall I take this off? The barf, I mean. Yeah. Splish splash, I was taking the I think I actually dipped my wig in the toilet. Ew. I did. It's fine, right? People have done worse on YouTube. Drop the mic, I'm out.